We are live. Welcome to She-Hulk Episode 1 Thoughts. This episode is called A Normal Amount of Rage. So, I am going to briefly get into the... Yeah, so some critics have said that Tatiana Maslany has great screen presence and a lot of charisma and has great chemistry with the people they pair her up with. And yeah, absolutely. I like you hope for this, but you you can't be sure that you get it. I I have to admit I am not familiar with her from anything else, but I had heard she's great. You know, I heard, I heard a lot of people who do know her other work rave about her being cast in this, you know, just, uh, not all heroes wear capes, and I do want to just briefly highlight the tremendous talents of, is it not? Sarah Finn, who is the casting director for 130 movies, and I forget, but I believe every single Marvel movie, and let's see, probably the shows, looks like all the shows as well. Yeah, all the shows so far, you know, up to and including Secret Invasion, Ironheart, Echo, and Agatha Coven of Chaos, so yeah. The, the, it's unreal how good of a job she does. Uh, yeah. I don't think they've ever given her a cameo. I feel like they should give her a cameo where, like, another character is just like, I wish I was as good as at my job as you are at your job. So, something like this. Just pitch perfect. Like, she's done such a great job. Okay. I'm not saying absolutely everyone was 100% perfectly cast. But, by and large, like, very, very few people, an argument could be made that maybe Edward Norton, as much as I love him, and that's a lot, he might not have been the best Bruce Banner slash Hulk. But, yeah, by and large, amazing work. Amazing job. No notes. Now, let's see... Yeah, so, to my own notes, the Marvel logo has Jane Foster as Mighty Thor. Very cool. And, and it, it, you know, some, some people don't want to call her Mighty Thor. If you can't get that out, she will accept Dr. Jane Foster. Badass line. Right. In addition to, you know, I, I put up the, the spoiler sign... In addition to spoilers for this show, I am spoiling the MCU up to this point. So, let's see. So, yeah, we open on her practicing her closing statement. And, I mean, I've s other people don't... S I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. To me, it looked like she was breaking the fourth wall for the first few seconds. Like, kind of letting us in to, to this, you know... Yeah, I, I don't know. I love how they shot down, shut down Dennis's sexist criticism. Smile more. Wow. I'm not saying that it is 100% unacceptable to tell a woman to smile more. Like, if you want her to smile, try doing something that might actually make her want to smile. I know crazy concept, but I don't think that there is absolutely no instance where it's okay. Like, if you are a dentist, and yeah, you need to check. Yeah, that that's it. And Jen breaks the fourth wall to give us the backstory on her becoming Hulk. I, I quite like, like, it really, you know, she, she says it, I, I get, I feel like you're not going to be able to focus on the lawyer show if 
if, if the Hulk thing isn't out of the way, so, so let's just get it out of the way, you know, in addition to her, like, talking directly to the audience, she is, like, choosing to, te to which, in which order to tell the story, you know, she's not, in, in yeah, I, I just, I love that they went that whole way, you know, some of the, some of the fourth wall breaks in the comics, like, I, it's been very long since I read, and I don't think I read the run where she breaks the fourth wall. I, I know I read the very first one, where she gets her powers, but I'm not sure I read past that. I wanted to, but, I mean, the reason I read it was because I inherited someone else's comic book collection, and I don't know, I mean, I guess that person didn't like the first issue of She-Hulk enough to buy the second? I don't know. I, yeah. Don't know what they were smoking. I think I might want some. The, but, but yeah, you know, in, yeah, in the comics, she will walk across the comic page using panels to, to teleport between locations and, like, there's one part where she, like, tears up the background so you can see the next page behind. And, and like, there's there's a cover where she's t t telling the prospective buyer, you better buy this comic or I am coming to your house. I'm going to rip up your X-Men comics. And yeah. <laughs> and... I feel like there was one more example. Yeah, there was one where she, like, looks at the camera in the comic and calls out the writer, or, or the, the artist, but one of the creatives, and is like, are you serious with this? You know, it's just, I, I love it, and I, I, I hope they go as far as they can here. I, it's a good start. Let's see. And you know, Hulk or Bruce explains this whole thing. You know, some some people have joked, "Oh, it's so they can save on effects that he doesn't have to be the Hulk all the time." I don't know that that's the case. It's entirely possible that he'll barely appear in the rest of the series because I don't. I d does she need to talk to him more? I don't think there's anything in the trailers of him that we haven't already seen. Anyway. Yeah, so, you know, he, he gives this detailed explanation for the fans, because, you know, a lot of us were like, Shang-Chi and credits in, um, Bruce, Bruce no longer smart Hulk, what's, what's up with that? And, you know, there we got no explanation, and now he just, like, spells it out, and since Jen doesn't really care, she's like, wow. That's the longest answer I've ever gotten to the question, what have you been up to? <laughs> you know, I mean, <laughs> you're going to get a detailed response from, you know, a, a superhero scientist. But yeah, you know, S Sakaar and Spaceship shows up in front of them leading to the car crash. I really love how later Bruce, you know, once, yeah, he's back in Smart Hulk form, he's like, uh, yeah, uh, Sakaar and Messenger Ship, God, I gotta check that out. I hope this is, I, I forget the exact line, but he's like, uh, I hope this better not be a hassle. It's, it's, you know, like, like his boss showed up and asked, hey, could you get to the bottom of, of this pile of documents by the end of the day that'd be great thanks and rushes you know he's like ah i can't believe i have to deal possible alien invasion there goes my weekend just love it and it, it, yeah I've, I've seen some people say you know uh the some of these characters are not serious enough i i'm afraid i forget exactly who but one of the creatives on the show said the characters that we've seen before that show up on this show, you know, they they behave in a way that fits the show, you know. So, 
yeah, I, I don't think that this means that they're never going to, you know, change and be, be different, be more serious or, or, you know, elsewhere. So, yeah, I, yeah, I kind of love it. Like, it's, it's She-Hulk's show and, you know, like, actually, yeah, is, is she a 100% reliable narrator? Is it just that, like, she wasn't completely listening and he's like oh wow he really goes on uh sounds like a hassle dude moving on and yeah back to the car crash so jen gets the hulk blood in her from bruce's wound you know yeah it, it works i i don't need her to be in a hospital bed for for the which it is in the comics for those who haven't read them you know yeah very first issue yeah, not not a spoiler. She is actually attacked by some criminals. I forget exactly what kind because of the case she's. She may be building a case against their boss or something like that. You know, so she's attacked, needs a blood transfusion, and you know he's. I think it's something like oh, you know, he's the only one with the matching blood. And I also feel like like if you do that in the show, it's like. Are you sure about this? Are you 100... Like, there's not a single person in this post-blib world that could possibly be a blood donor for her. Like, it's it's that unique. Her, her blood type is that unique. And keeping in mind that we know that Bruce can get into contact with Wong, because... You know, I, I don't know which called the other, but one of them contacted the other for, again, post credit scene of, mid credit scene, I guess, of Shang-Chi, and just recently rewatched it, still holds up, just absolutely amazing movie. So stoked that, ah, let, let's see, last time I accidentally got the name slightly wrong, so I'm gonna look up. Destin Daniel Cretton, so psyched, so hyped that he is directing, I forget the title, the Avengers The King Dynasty and the untitled Shang-Chi sequels. Yeah, just more, please. You know, if, if there's anyone who, like, this is, it's kind of the, the, the Russo brothers thing, you know, getting to the first they the you know first doing a solo movie and then moving on, you know, they didn't go directly to Avengers, but it wasn't you know, yeah, they they did two Captain America movies and Captain America three is practically an Avengers movie, and then they did two Avengers movies, the two best ones. So yeah, yeah, like I I just feel like you know could if if they did it like the comic, I feel like Bruce should just, like, contact Wong and be like, you know what my blood does. My cousin needs a blood transfusion. Can you find someone with the right blood type who's willing, you know, tell them they, you know, I'm, I'm gonna sign a picture for them or something. You know, I'm gonna, they, they can take a selfie with me. In, in Hulk form, if, if if needs must, and yeah, I, I really appreciate that it's just, no, the, you know, accidentally the blood goes in her wound, and, and I really like they give her a hero moment, you know, like she's out of the car, and she's like, Bruce, you know, which is also like, she knows he's Hulk, although, yeah, he did just say that, you know, the, the device keeps him from becoming Hulk, so... It might actually, uh, yeah, fair enough, but still though, it's it's pretty baller that n not everybody gets to save the Hulk. That's that is a rare privilege. Is it always women? Because because other times it was the the ah now I gotta do yeah Natasha Romanoff. I was gonna say the Black Widow, but that's about you know that that is. That is no longer not such Romanoff. Yeah, I... 
did I'm not sure Valkyrie ever saved him. Though they did have a, a quite good relationship. Now, and it, yeah, so waking up in the forest, unsure where they are, uncertain if what they think happened actually happened. Yeah, you gotta respect the classics. That is something that happens in stories about people losing control of their bodies and turning into creatures. And, you know, Jen gets into this, you know, what was it, like a sports bar bathroom. And, like, all these other women, you know, to try to take care of her, putting makeup on her, giving her some clothes and such. And one of them, and I love this, said, and I quote, No judgment, but whoever did this to you does not deserve you. You are better than him, or her, or them. It's true. All genders are capable of doing awful things. I appreciate they started by assuming it was a guy, because, let's be honest, it usually is. And Jen hugs out, terrifies the three creeps. I really wish that was what happened every single time. Douchey creeps refuse to accept when a woman doesn't want to talk to them. I, again, like, the show does a really great job. It, it makes it very clear. It's not like, oh, she just hates all men. No, like, look at her body language. And I think, does she verbally ask them to, to you know, and they're, like, following her. And it's like... Nothing she did suggested that this was something that she was okay with. You know, and that's, yeah, that, sometimes that happens if you go to, like, a dude-heavy place, like a sports bar, but it's, it really shouldn't. You know, she's, she's literally, she's living her life. She's, she's not doing anything that just, yeah. And Jen wakes up, Bruce explains... I, so, so yeah, we get the scene of the, the room. I really loved, you know, she's like, what do you usually use this room for, you psychopath? And it's like, yeah, um, has anyone gone missing in this area recently? Because I don't want to think that about Bruce Banner, but, um... Like, and it's all, like, was he gonna, was he using it for himself? Because it seems like you can't leave without tearing the door off. And then he's like, that cost, what was it, like a million dollars or a billion dollars, you know, something. And it's like, what was your plan exactly? And and then, you know, when he's trying to, to calm her down, that's also like, I mean, I am not one of the people who think that Everyone should be able to, you know, I forget, was it Doug Walker who, who back, you know, when, when Age of Ultron came out, said, why doesn't Natasha just teach everyone the, the, uh, yeah, lullaby, they call it a lullaby. Maybe it's because there's a special relationship, like, the Hulk when he rages out, is, a is essentially this hyper-masculine creature, you know, full of, full of anger and, and ready to commit violence. And yeah, like, if another man who's hyper-masculine, you know, certainly Steve, personality-wise, is not hyper-masculine, but physically... And Tony can be pretty, yeah, Thor, like, yeah, and, and like, Hawkeye isn't always, but he does, like, you know, he, he's like, I bet I can lift Thor's hammer. He's the first of them to say that, you know, like, he, he looks at this god and, you know, playing Thor and, and he's like, I bet I can do that. That's it's a trick, you know, so, yeah, I, I get the sense that maybe, you know, because Natasha is what she needs men around her to be, you know, and at the, when we first meet her in the first Avengers, I realize that's not the first appearance of the character, I'm saying her first thing in that movie, she's tricking these, you know, she, this idiot is giving me everything, you know, she, they thought she was this helpless victim, and she can just, like, get out of that situation 
anytime she wants. It's just like she's working. You know, this is, yeah. And yeah, you know, that that is the kind of person who could, you know, I, I suppose there's some chance Wanda Maximoff might not, at least in certain circumstances, she might not be the best at calming him down. Certainly not after the events of Age of Ultron with, yeah, so. Yeah, I, I really love She-Hulk's reaction to Smart Hulk trying to talk her down, expecting her to be out of control. Like, he's, he starts by, like, acting like she's a, she's a horse, like, whoa, girl. And, you know, and, and she literally says, why are you talking to me like I'm a horse? You know, and yeah, they, they go through how she doesn't have, you know, an other guy. And the, yeah, uh, let's see. Yeah, I'm again, I'm glad that we get that out of the way quickly. I appreciate that they made it a joke because it like it it's legitimately funny. That he's like, you know, uh oh, I'm I'm dealing with this, you know, rage beast who's out of control, and she's like, "What are you doing?" Like it's, like, it, yeah, like she's she's mildly annoyed, you know, she's not gonna destroy the lab, she's just like, stop, you know, enough with the buzzsaw room, you know, I turned green, big deal. And we get a montage as we see that Jen is better as Hulk than Bruce is. And she explains all the sexism and misogyny she's dealt with and how that's why she's so good at controlling her anger. And we see that she can change back at will. And we get a fight between the two Hulks because it's mandatory. Like, at some point, I'm like, okay, we we don't actually need a fight every single time two costumed characters you know are in the same vicinity at the same time like and they rebuild the bar and we're back to the lawyer show and the lawyer is like you know i'm i'm not going to quote the entire line but one of the things he says is that depends on your definition of knowing. I mean, that's that's a lawyer right there. Like, he's talking about the biblical sense, or what? What exactly? Certainly, his client is screwing people over, so that's perhaps appropriate. Like, I half expected him to bring out like the the. Uh, Ah, crap, what's it called? Um, affluenza argument or something. And Jen takes off her shoes, so she won't ruin those transforming. It's great. Yeah. And that was, I think that was Nikki. Like, dude, quick, remember, you know, take off the shoes before it's just, what are friends for? And so, yeah, the, the fight between She-Hulk and Titania I didn't mind how short it is, as some others did. I do agree that it is very awkwardly edited and rushed. Like, Titania throws a table, She-Hulk catches it, throws it, Titania tries to do like a flying kick, She-Hulk, I want to say like punches her in the gut or something. Like, I, I get, you know, when I when I get punched in the gut... I don't exactly like yeah I I might need uh, just just a, give give me a give me a couple minutes and before we proceed but yeah the the I didn't really mind I I I guess that's all I'm going to say about that but yeah I I love that you know after that she turns around I'm ready to give my closing argument now. And at first I thought, you know, maybe the end credits mean that she actually got to give the closing statement and did so in Hulk form, which is awesome. But some of the closing credit, hmm, 
some of the closing credits don't quite match that idea, so it is just that, yeah. And great ending to a pilot. Everyone will know now that she's a Hulk, so a big reason to return next week. You know, we want to see how people react to that. You know, and yeah, the trailers have given us some hints, but still, you know, that's, yeah, I, I am really psyched to see next week this this kind of, yeah. She's not the first reluctant hero in the MCU. That's actually kind of a thing, isn't it? There's a bunch of them that at first are like, I don't know. But this idea that apparently, like, she doesn't really want to be a hero. She wants to be a lawyer. You know, she's, she put a lot of time and effort into building this career. And it's, you know, starting to take off. It's, it's you know, and she's, yeah. So, so, yeah. And, yeah, so, so the, the mid credit sequence, which, if you haven't watched, pause this video right now. Go watch it on Disney Plus. So, yeah, I'm I am assuming that everyone still watching has already watched it because that is not something that I want to spoil for anyone. Jen fakes being sad drunk and is like, you know, she 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 sells it, man. That ass did not deserve to die a virgin. You know, just holy crap, and she like. She she can like turn off the waterworks turn turn on and off the waterworks just like that like which I guess comes in handy for a lawyer I guess maybe the and yeah and it goes with the the you know in control of her emotions thing and you know yeah she, she's just trying to find out if Steve Rogers did have sex. And apparently she thinks that he's dead, so that must be what at least some people think. Like, in, in Falcon and the Winter Soldier, we were told that at least some people thought he was on the moon. So, I don't know, I it's not a big deal, but I would appreciate a straight answer, uh, like, uh, yeah. And we end on her starting to say, and I'm obviously not going to say it either, Captain America. F's or F'd. But yeah, the the and that's cause for celebration. Cause let's be honest. He earned the the yeah. And the the what was the um what was the other thing about that? Uh, yeah, various people have theorized maybe it was the Natalie Dormer character in the the first movie i could see that although uh hold on they said it, uh smart hulk says that it was a uso girl i'm like no i'm i'm certain she was she must have been like she 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 wasn't just she uh, she wasn't a uso girl she wasn't in any of those shows she was like the secretary of ah uh, who what was he going to see Peggy or was it ah uh, I can't recall I can't believe I'm blanking on his name um okay this is this this cannot stand I am going to just very Tommy Lee Jones is you know but but yeah I can see that it might have been her and we know Steve didn't always doesn't always tell the truth no he's he, yeah he's not dead he's really really old and you know the writers think that he I forget yeah the writers and the directors disagree. One of the, the groups thinks that he created a new timeline, and that's where he's happy. And the other group think that he, like he's, you know, he went back to after he disappeared into the ice, 
and, you know, I guess sat out every single catastrophe where he could have helped, which does not sound very Steve Rogers, but yeah. Let's see. I really love how unashamedly the show is about a woman and primarily for women. Like, she worries about things that we have not seen MCU men worry about. Catcalling, mansplaining, shoes, you know, these are things that... The shoes thing is a stereotype. I'm not, you know, but yeah, catcalling and mansplaining, those are things that women have to deal with. And if you are, like, just about to type in the comments, like, well, I don't do that, great. Now go convince some other men not to do that, instead of getting defensive. Now, but yeah, I, you know, we, we know now that Jenna is confident, comfortable with her sexuality, sarcastic, career-oriented. And, yeah, once again, an MCU Disney Plus show that rushes through the origin story. I, I think I already mentioned, I do not mind the simplification of the blood transfusion, but, yeah, I, the show has nine episodes, so you feel like they could, I don't know, maybe, hopefully, this is the, the end of the, of the rushing. Now, so, yeah, I, I saw at least one female YouTuber point out, in the bathroom of the ladies' night in the sports bar, the women there really embrace being friends with and helping Jen, this woman they've never met before. They're probably pretty buzzed, and for a lot of young women, that means being super friendly with other women. You know, suddenly they're... Well, not suddenly, but they are, like, 100% each other's best friend ever, and, you know, BFF all the way. And, yeah, like, it's... You know, it... In part, the, the the show's making a joke out of that, and that's that's fine because it's for women, by women, and about women. So you know they're they're allowed, but it is also like they actually really do help her. Like she you know she goes back outside afterwards, and she's like, I mean, for one thing, I I figure she would probably be cold if they didn't you know put. A, yeah, and, and before anyone says, ah, but once that was put on her, you know, that's why the guys, you know, started to, to follow her like that. First of all, that's not an excuse. Second of all, there are guys who will, you know, pursue a woman regardless of how little she does to encourage it. You know, yeah, as you, you know, you see in this episode, she does nothing to encourage them. She does everything possible to to just shut them down like hypothetically if i was in that situation if i saw a woman like walking away and you know like i might at most like once try to to say you know to to say something or such but the moment that she shuts it down like all you have to do is say okay no problem, and go about your like, I, you know, some conservatives freak out like she's doing something horrible. Like, it's because it's it's the status thing. They they can't handle rejection by a woman, especially in front of other men. Anyway, and also, clothes are not encouraging, you know, unwanted attention. Now, let's see. Right, so I know some people believe that if a woman expresses her sexuality, it must mean that it's there for the straight male audience. I really don't think that is true or the case here. The camera never ogles her, and the characters who treat her like a sex object are clearly in the wrong. And we wind up really laughing at them. Like, you know, they're, they're easily the most pathetic in, in this, like... You know, she she was just in a room full of, you know, drunk young women, and we're not really like we're we're kind of thinking, wow, they're they're really sweet. That's 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 so nice. You know, the the ones we laugh at are these douchey guys. Now, you know, she's not asexual. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but that's not that's not this character, at least based on the comics and the trailer. 
now yeah it looks like they really will be embracing that she's a comic book character that likes enjoying life you know partying actively pursuing sex I don't know if that's gonna be like a major thing she's going for there's nothing wrong with that or if it's you know gonna be if she's gonna continue to be really career oriented either way it's fine it is interesting to finally have in the MCU a career oriented young woman who is not working as a spy or a soldier. Keeping in mind, Wanda did not become career oriented until she started working as a spy. You know, oh, it's. Yeah, at the start of Civil War, she's being a spy. Like, she's sitting there, like, checking out, uh, you know, on. She's on, you know, they are all on comms right now. And, yeah. That is it. So, yeah, I did not expect to talk for almost as long as the episode go. Actually, I guess slightly longer. Yeah, I I that oh, this was a really fun episode and I am really looking forward to where they go next. You know, I already think that the like I thought they used Smart Hulk well and I agree that Titania it was like short but it was unexpected and it was legitimately funny like she's just trying to be a lawyer and then there's like this thing of okay i get fine i'll hulk out you know make sure to take off the shoes and we do see like one of her uh jacket sleeves like tears from the transformation you know and then she, you know beats this person and turns around it's like I'm ready to give my closing statement now she you know she's not like basking in in the glow of of attention for being a superhero and she's not like ashamed of because she just saved you know like Titania threw a table towards the jury like several of them would have gotten hurt I figure at least some of them would have probably ended up dead like yeah, the, the, ah, let's see, that is, so, so, yeah, you know, and, yeah, she is, yeah, I, I love how much she, like, takes charge here, like, she's telling the story, and it is her story, and just, yeah, really, really psyched to see the, the, the next episode, the rest of this show, so, that is it for this week. I hope you enjoyed watching as I enjoyed watching and recording, and I'll catch you next time.